Hello everyone, I am Nitej and today we will explore the power of server sent events with Node.js and React Frontend. This is an exciting area in web development that allows real-time communication between a server and a web client. So server sent events enable servers to push data to the client and unlike web sockets, the SSEs are unidirectional which means the flow of data is from server to the client only. This makes it perfect for scenarios like live news feeds, social media updates, or maybe real-time analytics about dashboards. So as long as the connection of client and server is active, the server can keep on sending new data to the web page. So server sent events solve the challenge in web development in updating the client side with real-time information without overloading the server with requests. Polling for data every few seconds is inefficient and can lead to performance issues. That's where server sent events comes in as an effective or efficient alternative. Now to use the server sent events in web browser, we need to use the event source object or the event source interface. Using event source makes it very easier to receive the data which is being sent by the server for the event stream as long as the connection is active. Now let's see our SSE implementation in action. Here is a quick demo of the final code. So this is a React frontend which is making or initiating a connection with a Node.js backend by using the server sent events. Now the Node.js backend is going to send individual words after an interval so the react frontend is going to get all the words and then it's going to print it on the screen and this is how instead of fetching the entire text in a single flow the words are being provided by the server to the client as and when they are becoming available as an example you can consider a live feed when there are any new updates to the live feed then you can use server sent events to update the client about the new feed. All right, it's now time for the code walkthrough. I will show you how we can implement the backend and frontend for this project. The first thing that I will do is I will create new folders for the server and the client. So let's do that. So server and client. Now open up the terminal. I am going to open up two terminals over here. So the first one is to initialize a new React application. For that, I'm just going to write the command. But before that, let me just cd into the client folder. All right, now write the command npx and then create React app. Now the name of the React application, I'm just going to call it React Node SSE. Press enter. Now let's wait for the React application to initialize in this folder. So the React application is done setting up and now we can just cd into the react folder and now let's move to another terminal to set up the node application for that first i will cd into the server folder and now i will write npm and then init let's use all the default values okay so we have a node.js backend and we have a react frontend the first thing that i will do is let's create a new component in our react frontend for that let's create a new folder with the name components and the name of the component that we are going to use is the event source component so event source component let's create a new jsx file over here so index.jsx i'm just going to generate the arrow function template and let's use the same name so event source component let's export it as well now let's clean out the default stuff from the app.js file and let's import the event source component and let's use it over here so event source component now i am going to run the react application or start it on localhost so npm start so our react application is running on localhost port 3000 now before we do anything else 
let's now start to implement our server index.js so for that i will create a new file in the server let's just call it as index.js and we are going to need two dependencies for our node.js server the first one is the express and the second one is the course so npm install express and course now in our index.js file the first thing that we will do is to import the required modules so const express equals to require express and another one is we will initialize a new express app so app equals to express now let's also import the course dependency so const course equals to require require course and let's also have a const for the port that we are going to use to host or run our node backend so port can be 5000 now the first thing that we need to do over here is to do the course setting so that the um, localhost 3000 is allowed to use the endpoint which is going to be exposed by our node.js server so for that i'm going to write app dot use this is a middleware so course and then let's provide options for the course i am going to whitelist this origin which is http and then localhost 3000 next we will set up the endpoint for our server send events in our node.js backend so when a get request is made to this endpoint then the callback function provided will handle the request so to do that i'm just going to write app.get and then the endpoint name so events and then the callback function with the request and response arguments so this is going to be an arrow function now the first thing inside this function that we need to do is to write the http headers to the response so the headers that we are going to write are these ones let's write response or res dot write head first we need to provide the status code and then the headers the first one is going to be the content type so uh, content type which is going to be text event stream indicating that this is an event stream next we need to write cache control so for this partial um, sending of data using the event stream we are not going to cache anything and then finally for the connection we are going to keep it alive so keep alive all right now what we are going to do is we will just send individual words of a long text one by one to simulate the event streaming on the react front end so that we will know that our event streaming for the server sent events is working for that i will just create a new const with the name long text and i am just going to paste some very long text over here which we can use to test our node and ssc backend which is this one and now let's split this text into words so const words equals to long text dot split using the white space character let's also create an index value so that we can use it as a cursor to um, iterate over all the words in the words array now let's create a function called send words that we will be using to send the events to the client so const send words equals to a new function and then over here we will check if index is less than words dot length if that's the case then we will simply write to the response the event streaming data now there is a specific format in which we can write this data which starts with data and then a colon and then we need to provide the actual data 
which is actually the individual words that we are going to send for each index and this must be followed by um, two new line characters and after this we can simply increment the index to move on to the next word now if the if index is not less than words then we can simply you know clear our interval so we will be using set interval to send these words on a specific time interval like for example you know 500 milliseconds 1000 milliseconds or one second etc so before that let's define our interval so that you will be able to see what i'm talking about i'm just going to first fetch the res uh, reference of the interval in this const interval id equals to set interval so set interval is going to call send words function and let's use the uh, duration as 500 milliseconds and now over here in this else part we can simply call clear sorry clear interval and we need to provide the reference of the interval id which is this one and when the request will be closed then we can simply again clear the interval so on request close we can again clear the interval so that this send words function will not keep on getting called again and again and then finally we can write app.listen so we will expose this node.js backend on port 500 so app.listen port and then let's also provide a message so console.log server running on port and then let's put the port number but because this needs to be a template string let's do that let's save the code and now let's see if this um, server is running or not so i'm just going to write node index.js so it says server running on port 5000 so let's now move on to our react front-end implementation so if you remember we created a component with the name event source component so in this component what we are going to do is first we are going to create a state variable with the name text and let's also um, have the default value for it which is going to be an empty string so whatever words that we will be receiving from the um, you know event stream we will be appending those words in this text state variable and we will display the text in this div so text all right next we will be using the event source api to make a connection with the events endpoint that our node.js backend is exposing for that i am going to use a use effect hook so use effect let's write the callback function so callback function is going to run only when the component mounts for the first time so inside this function let's um, initialize the event source so event source equals to new event source and then we have to give the url which is where the node.js backend is running so http and then localhost 5000 the endpoint is events and next we have to um, wire up the event source on message event with a function so on message equals to a new function um, okay so each data which will be sent from the server to the client will be received in e dot data property so we have to use that so i'm just going to um, set the text state variable directly the previous text can be used over here so the previous text is the argument for this function and the return value is going to be previous text plus a white space character because we are only sending individual words and not the white space character so previous text plus e dot data and i think that is everything we need to do but there is one more thing that we can do and that is to 
close the event source when the component unmounts so let's do that otherwise the browser will keep on receiving the event streaming data even after the component has been unmounted so for that we are going to return a function with the body event source dot close and i think that is pretty much everything we need to do and now let's run our react app locally so for that i am just going to okay it is actually already running i just forgot about that now let's see if our code is correctly fetching the event streaming data or not so i have refreshed this page and nothing is happening let's see if anything is there in the console it says fail to load resource err name not resolved i'm not really sure what that means so let's go to the network tab and this is the events so there is no response let's check what is wrong with our server code so the problem with our node.js server code was that i have used https instead of http i guess out of habit i have done that but with this change when i will run the node.js server again then we will see that our react front end is working perfectly receiving all the data items now let me also show you how to inspect this call in the network tab so let me just refresh it first so this is the events endpoint and you can see that we have now a custom tab event stream with all the messages that the client is receiving and the timestamp associated with those messages and you know with event stream in our react code when we are receiving the individual words then we are just appending those words to the um, text state variable and this is how we can fetch real-time updates from the server by using the uh, unidirectional event stream api i hope you found this tutorial on server sent events with node.js and react insightful and practical sse is a powerful tool in your web development arsenal especially for real-time applications if you enjoyed this video and learned something new please hit the subscribe button your support motivates me to create more content like this. Don't forget to like and share this video. And if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. I am Nitej and I will see you in the next one.